Well, I want to thank the United Sikhs for inviting me to this dinner and for doing such a great job in advocating for issues that are of concern to the Sikh American community. It is not unless you raise your voice that people will know what the issues are and can do anything about it. I'm particularly grateful because it was the United Sikhs that actually suggested that I start the American Sikh Congressional Caucus. And we were able to get it going. There was enthusiastic response, and now we have 37 members of Congress that have joined it, and they're both Democrat and Republican. There's uh, at least seven Gurdwaras, and there's also at one of the libraries the largest Pun uh, collection of Punjabi books outside of India in my district. And so there's a large population. There's obviously 25,000 people, Sikh Indians, in, in the Central Valley and in, in my district of California. And uh, the American Sikh community has been a big part of the district. They've been a big part of my community. They, they serve as doctors, pharmacists. They serve a lot of them own farms now. We've got some of the largest farmers in, in the valley uh, come from or are Sikh uh, immigrants. And they've been a huge part of agriculture for us in the valley. And as, a, as their representative, obviously we always represent all the issues across the board the same, but specific to sex and what we follow and what we see is that they've been treated differently, especially since uh, the attacks that we had on September 11th, 2001. And they've been uh, discriminated against, bullied, just treated differently. And that's something that, that I've come across now um, and spent a lot more time getting engaged in the conversation. It's something that I wanted to help make a difference uh, for. So this year, I was asked and, and, and approached to, to be part of this, and I was happy to be part of it and actually join. And now I, I'm the, the founding co-chair with Congresswoman Judy Chu. Both of us from California, we both represent large sect communities. And so it's, a, it's an honor for us to be part of that. And since starting that, we've done, we've been vocal uh, with different parts of the, uh, with the, the administration and other parts of uh, government to make sure that we include and everybody is treated equally and have the same opportunities and try to fix some of the issues that we've had. And, and so we're going to continue that fight. I'm going to continue in my district working with some of my constituents. I've actually gone out and started little regional groups that I get together with and sit down and talk about different issues and how it's affecting them. So it, it really is, for me, a grassroots effort and it's something that I'm thrilled to be a part of, but it's something where we could actually see a difference or see an opportunity to make a difference. So again, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and say hello and, and I'll continue to do my best to fight and, and to represent this community uh, here and around the country. So thank you very much for having me and again, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming tonight. We have honorary guests who have traveled from around the country, from California to New York to Florida, and we thank you for taking the time to make the journey here to join us. When I said, it means we belong to God. Our victory belongs to God. It is a greeting used from one Sikh to another as a greeting, in a sign of brotherhood. When Guru Nanak, our founding guru, roamed the earth, he saw everyone, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, all in one light. This vision of his was carried over by the Sikhs as time went on. Since then, the Sikh community all around the world has endured a long journey facing many adversities in human rights. Tonight, over 500 years later, we celebrate our journey from inspiration to success. Many in this room have understood the Sikh community's pain and struggles and have joined our cause. For that, we thank you.
You inspire us to continue working hard and fighting for our faith and our right to be treated equally in a country that is ours as well. In this room, we have leaders from the Sikh community who have overcome society's attempts to wither our faith from achieving success. We have doctors, lawyers, government workers, heads of gurdwaras, activists, and more. You inspire the youth in our community to strive to succeed and do not allow societal pressures to deter your dreams. As of July of this year, hate crimes against Sikhs are being tracked by the FBI thanks to our collective efforts pushing for such a policy. In Michigan, a Sikh was thrown out of a courtroom for wearing a turban, but after United Sikhs filed a complaint with the Department of Justice, a new policy which explicitly allows for rel religious headwear to be worn in the courtroom is now in effect in Kalamazoo County, Michigan. The probate judge also personally apologized to the Sikh gentleman. In Mississippi, the American Civil Liberties Union has joined us in our efforts to help a sick man who was ridiculed by the Department of Transportation officers, called a terrorist and ar arrested for wearing an article of his faith. On the day of his court hearing, the judge had him escorted out of the courtroom and ordered that his turban be removed. Shockingly, the judge also called his turban a rag and said if he didn't remove it, his case would be placed at the end of the docket. The threat was executed. United States filed a complaint with the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division. An investigation was started in this matter and finally a new policy on harassment and non-discrimination came into effect in Pike County, Mississippi. The policy includes that no one will be denied a public just because of the fact that he or she is wearing a religious headwear or attire. Meanwhile, a bar in California hung up portraits of, a revered, of our revered Sikh gurus on its wall, which is a sacrilegious act. Emotions in the Sikh community there ran high, and after much effort, the United Sikhs was able to have the portraits removed in the bar. And of course, we worked very hard collectively to band about 30 congressmen together to fight for our cause through the American Sikh Congressional Caucus. But also, right now, as I speak, four Sikh boys in California are unable to go go-karting with their friends because they are being denied access due to their turbans. In New York, a Columbia professor will have to watch where he walks in Upper Manhattan after being attacked due to ignorance about his faith. In New York, a Sikh boy cannot pursue a path in serving his country because the ROTC wants him to choose between his faith and his country. This year, we formed the American Sikh Congressional Caucus. These congressional members, some of who are going to be here tonight, are here to help us. It is up to us to make sure we work with them every single day here at the nation's capital. That is why right now, United States is getting ready to open its policy office here in Washington, D.C. to tackle our community's concerns by meeting with our con congressmen and agency officials from the Department of Justice, Department of State, Department of Education, Department of Homeland Security, the White House, uh, USA, Department of Defense, Department of Labor, and much more. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate the United States for this event and for all that you do. And whether it's the youth event, uh, whether it's uh, all the, the meetings that you're having, there was a meeting at CRS today that we had as well, uh, your work is crucial. And uh, let me say that we've been very proud as CRS, the Community Relations Service, uh, to have done lots of work with the sick uh, groups, with, with your organization, and all the great work that you've done. And as was, as was mentioned earlier by Anisha, uh, the work that it took to add the anti-sick category to the hate crimes reporting, uh, that was something that we worked with, with you all on, along with the Civil Rights Division, along with the FBI, to make that happen. So we were very proud to help push that uh, past the end zone line, as it, as it were. Um, uh, and, and I think it's going to make a big difference. Now, there's going to be a heavy lift involved in that now, right? There's going to be a lot of education that needs to be done uh, so that law enforcement throughout the country 
will be able to, to utilize that as a tool uh, to, to deal with uh, unfounded hate crimes and unfounded violence. So we're certainly going to need your help as well in doing, in doing that. With your theme of recognizing the human race as one, he's a man who's fought for, whether it's the African American, the LGBT, religious minorities, fighting for the civil rights of all people. Um, and these are the allies that we'll need to really get over the, uh, the hurdles that uh, are still ahead of us, as, as we've heard. Um, I won't speak long, I'll just say that um, one of my uh, mentors is a guy um, who's a, he was a close friend and lieutenant of Dr. King's. His name is uh, Joseph Lowry. He helped found the, the SCLC, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference with Dr. King uh, back during the height of the Civil Rights Movement. And um, he tried to encourage us. He would come to Iowa from time to time during the early days of the Obama campaign when no, really, no one really knew who Barack Obama was. And he would encourage us by saying, you know, as we would have community meetings in Des Moines and Dubuque and other places in Iowa when it was early and nobody would show up. It would be a small room, half full, 20, 30 people when we were expecting 80 to 100 people. And he would tell us it was the same pattern he saw when he and Dr. King were organizing for civil rights you know, back in the 50s and the 60s. Um, and that a lot of the folks that today would say, we marched with Dr. King or we marched with uh, A. Philip Randolph, he always would say, uh, Dr. Lowry would say, they must have been marching at home. You know, because after the fact, after the victory is won, everyone takes credit for it. Um, even with the Obama campaign, I, I was on the campaign early, and a lot of folks now claiming credit for an Obama administration, they didn't show up until after the election, but that's another conversation. Um, and the point I'm making is simply that, um, you know, in this relatively small room of people, um, I know that you all are the ones, day in and day out, are looking for ways to make this country fairer and more civil and to make sure that if anyone's treated differently, sick or non-sick, that that's wrong, and that we're all coming together to point that out and say that we as a country are better than that. Um, so I, I just want all of you to be encouraged. Uh, in my short time at the White House, um, relatively, it's been four and a half years, but some of you have been in this fight for a lot longer than that. Uh, be encouraged, because the work that you're doing, being uh, a part of the summit, training up young sick leaders, that next generation, thinking ahead for who's going to carry the torch after you all step back in a few years. Um, that is the way that things have always worked um, successfully. And one of my favorite quotes is that Margaret Mead quote of, you know, never doubt that a small group of committed individuals can change the world. Indeed, nothing else ever has. Um, and you all, I think, are a, a part of that small group of committed individuals working day in and day out to make this country live up to the, uh, our highest ideals. So thank you very much for the uh, recognition, and I hope you have a great evening. In my years at the head of the ACLU's program on freedom of religion and belief, I've had the pleasure and the privilege to fight side by side with United Six and the, and the broader Sikh community in the U.S. Um, on many issues of fundamental religious liberty and equality in this country. And these struggles, unfortunately, uh, have taken many forms in this, in this ongoing battle. We, we have fought together um, for the ability of sick employees to work in the public and private sectors, free from discrimination or stigma. We work for, on behalf of the right of sick children to attend public school in the U.S. wearing kirpan and other articles of faith without being singled out, punished, or bullied. And so in the end, we, we achieved some important changes there and some encouraging ones. But this type of discrimination and mistreatment needs to stop. It erodes our fundamental commitment to religious liberty and it undermines the basic promise in this country of equal treatment under the law. But with partners like United States, we at the ACLU will continue to fight so that everyone in the U.S. can realize that promise. So I want to thank you all again for working with us. Um, there are many of these issues that we couldn't possibly do without you, and um, it's an honor to be here tonight. Thank you. As our founder, Roger Baldwin, used to say, no civil liberties battle ever remains won. So here we are today, continuing to fight that same fight. 
I like to think that because of the work that you've done in education and in standing up for your rights and the work that we've done in assistance of that, I think that people do have a better understanding of the Sikh religion. And I want to tell you that following up on the Mississippi case that you've heard about, Bear Atwood, who's actually a young woman, she signs her emails, Bear Atwood, parens, Ms. <laughs> you know, Bear, B-E-A-R, is, is what her first name is. But she wrote a blog about the Mississippi case that Dan and Anisha were both describing. And the title of the blog was something like, Judge to Seek Man, Take That Rag Off Your Head. And you know, people who keep track of such things tell me that that was the most frequently viewed blog for, you know, for that week. Thousands of people, you just wanted to read that. And I think that that really is a sign of growing understanding that people read that headline and they found it shocking and provocative enough that they wanted to read what she had to say about that. So I think you know, things are improving, although no civil liberties battle remains won. But there are certainly still a lot of pockets of intolerance and lack of understanding. So one thing that's very special about the ACLU is that we do have a presence in every state. And we've had affiliates not only in Michigan and Mississippi, but in Texas and California and Oregon and Virginia, litigating all kinds of discrimination, people being fired, school children being sent home. Uh, there was just a case in Virginia that the ACLU won in 2012 that um, said that if you are an ordained minister of a religion, you don't have to post a fee when you want to perform a marriage. But if you come from a religion that doesn't have ordained ministers, then you have to post a bond of $500. Well, you know, the court recognized that as discriminatory. So Yes, indeed, we have you know, done our best to partner with the Sikh community, as well as people from many other religions, as Dan was saying, in order to help minority faiths to be better understood and to help avoid discrimination, to, to, uh, and you're saying, to recognize the human race as one and respect other people's religions as our own. It's important that we work together and look forward to moving the agenda forward. We learned a lot of very uncomfortable but very powerful lessons, particularly with September 11th, that is, 9-1-1. We learned very well that, that our rights, our privileges, and our liberties are very fragile. And with that, we have to work every day to make sure we not only shore them up, but move to actually move them forward. So with that, to the members of Congress that have joined us here today, to my friends from the administration that are here, been on the front line from the very beginning, my great friend Paul Montero, who I will write a check to for those wonderful things that he said about me just a little bit earlier today, but to all of you and the work that we'll do from this point on to make sure our nation lives up to that promise. This year, we recognize the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington. We thought a lot about what happened and 50 years ago on that very hot August 28th day at the Lincoln Memorial. We thought about how Dr. King so eloquently pulled together all the statements being made. Most people would think that Dr. King was the only speaker that spoke on that hot August day, but indeed he was one of nine. I'm honored to be here. Uh, as a member of the Sikh Caucus in the House of Representatives, I'm joined uh, lately with my colleague Judy Chu, who will speak to you shortly. Uh, but uh, I might tell you why I, I joined the Sikh Caucus, uh, and I'll give you two reasons. First of all, uh, Stockton, California is the center of my district. It's the home of the oldest Sikh temple in the United States of America, more than 100 years old now. Every year I go to the uh, events uh, at the temple and I'm just impressed with the quality of people and, uh, and the degree of reverence that, that people show for each other and the respect uh, that is generated there. And I really appreciate the invitations. They mean a lot to me. Uh, Harpreet, uh, I don't see him right now, but uh, has always been uh, an advocate and a speaker and I appreciate uh, your, your work, Harpreet. The other reason that I joined the uh, uh, seek caucuses because it's the right thing to do. It's that simple. You know, the United States of America for more than 200 years has been a symbol of freedom, of liberty. Generations of immigrants have come to this country on the boats and they've seen the Statue of Liberty here over and over. Seeing that symbol brought tears to their eyes. And yet, when they landed and found out the life in this country wasn't exactly the ideal. And they had to fight for their rights, and they had to fight to be accepted, and they had to fight for equality, and now that's what uh, the United Sikhs is doing, and I think it's a tremendous uh, opportunity for this country to learn, to benefit, to grow. 
uh, and uh, for the Sikhs themselves to establish themselves as a major part of this country, as a, as a major cultural influence, as a major uh, moral influence, uh, and as a major economic influence. And these things are happening. So uh, what, what we see, what I see in front of me uh, is what has to happen and what needs to happen. Uh, and the results are going to continue to improve. Now, let me just tell you what the Sikh uh, is a means to me. Now, any, to any religion uh, has ideals. Any religion says, well, we want our members to live up to certain ideals uh, about uh, treating your fellow neighbor, about taking care of the poor, uh, about acting with respect, and so on. The thing about the Sikhs is that you are willing to wear public symbols of that commitment. And when you see, uh, when I see a Sikh on the street, I, th I say, there's a person that I can have confidence. There's a person of respect. There's a person of honor. That's what the turban means to me. And that's what it needs to mean to members of this country. So it's an honor to be here tonight. Uh, and you know, when, when we talk about how do we move forward, how do we uh, erase or how do we end the discrimination, how do we end the uh, uh, fear that Americans uh, that, that are ignorant may feel? And the answer, of course, is education. We need to make sure that our, our schools uh, have uh, discussion of, of the different uh, people uh, that, that, that comprise our culture of the benefits and the histories of these cultures because that's what makes the United States of America, that's what makes us great, is the fact that we can take uh, a new culture, uh, integrate it into our society, and everybody benefits. So uh, that's why I joined the Sea Caucus, and that's why I want to move forward and see uh, this great culture be uh, continue to be and to, and to grow to be a great part of the United States of America. Thank Thanks. you, sir. I first became aware of the five Ks when California passed a no tolerance, zero tolerance on knives and guns and weapons on, on school campuses. And then I had to meet with a family, a sick family who were representing some of the community and asking me and telling me, how did you, how can you help us with this information too that the Kitwa is not a weapon the way we described it in the state of California uh, laws. That is a symbol of Sikhism, the symbol of the religion. And it means something, and how can you help? And so when we worked through it, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about the five Ks. I learned about what Sikhism is. It's about being a dis disciple, a disciplined disciple. And when we started to work in our communities, in our city councils, we started to work through our city council members, which I would suggest that you ask them, what is it about the police department and fire department that you're not hiring Sikhs who are traditional practitioners of the religion? Meaning, why should they get rid of their turban when they're going to be part of the police department and the fire department? Last week in San Jose, in the city of Milpitas, the city of Milpitas hired the very first sick police officer. He got hired last week. He got hired last week, and his, his name was Jeskiba Singen. We've been at his father's home, the uh, big ball, Dr. Big Paul Singh's son. Now you have a sick that's going to walk around the city of Milpitas carrying a gun. <laughs> Along with this kid of mine. <laughs> Along with the other five kids. He's going to wear a hat on him, right? And maybe he's going to wear his good cut truck, you know? <laughs> Who knows? But we do know one thing that his presence, and the way he's going to be wearing his uniform with the turban and with his beard and with the other artifacts of his religion, people will start to know and understand that. There's a law enforcement officer who happens to be sick. We said that. This was a wonderful evening. I, you know, came from New Jersey, and this this was an eye-opening. You know, we saw that United States doing is doing such a wonderful job. There were so many representatives. Um, our Congress representatives were here who were supporting 
you know, what United Six is envisioning for the Six across the country. And I was even more um, encouraged when I heard about the Sikh Caucus, that there are uh, multiple congressmen and congresswomen who are part of the Sikh Caucus, who are fighting for us. So it feels really good that there are our elected officials who are now in, in this battle with us, that we are not alone, they will fight with us in order to erase bullying from schools, in order to help a sick young man or a woman to serve with their Death Star in police or in army, that now we would not fear when we are walking on the street. So it was a wonderful um, you know, evening where United Six has done an excellent job, and I wish them luck. Uh, this was a great summit. Uh, we got to visit many congressional offices, and we got to raise all the issues that the community faces. So we raised issues uh, that the community faces at the airports, uh, school bullying issues, discrimination uh, in every sphere of public life in the United States. And then we raised the issue, uh, the primary issue of sex not being able to serve in the U.S. Army uh, with their Articles of Faith intact. Uh, this is an issue which is of deep concern to the Sikh community. Uh, sex, uh, Sikh youth uh, presently cannot serve in the ROTC programs or in the U.S. Armed Forces unless they sacrifice their Articles of Faith. And uh, we discussed many other issues like uh, sex. Sick children cannot ride go-karts at, at amusement parks in California. They're being asked to remove their patkas. And then uh, sick cannot serve in the police departments uh, in various states uh, around the United States. The DC police is the only police department which has a religious accommodation uh, provision for devout sex. So we need to change this. Uh, and we need to carry this mission forward. We, uh, over the days, we met with the State Department, the, the Department of Justice, the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division, and uh, we brought all these issues to their attention. The recent cases where judges had asked sick, uh, sick gentlemen to remove their hats, they refer to their turbans as hats, or uh, not enter their courtrooms. So these are the variety of issues that uh, we brought to the notice of uh, congressional offices. And uh, as I said earlier, we sought their support on the army issues, and then we sought their support in including, in getting ample information about the Sikh faith included in textbooks so that hate crimes uh, can be prevented. Right? The best way to uh, dispel ignorance is education. So if we have ample information in school textbooks, uh, uh, the children can get to know who Sikhs are, what this faith is all about, and uh, education can lead to a drastic change. So these are some issues that we discussed with uh, all these offices that I just mentioned. As a, as a United States citizen, uh, that's not something any citizen should have to face with, between uh, choosing his religion or his uh, country, you know. Every, I believe every citizen should be allowed to serve their country regardless of what their faith is and what their faith requires. And we also have, you know, Sikhs have had a long history of serving our nations in, in time of war. And, you know, we, we've proven ourselves that we could serve without any hindrance of our Articles of Faith. Uh, United Six has helped me uh, with, uh, with a, a letter to the uh, Lieutenant Colonel, uh, the head of the Departmental Chair of the RTC Command. This organization, through the humanitarian work, it may be tsunami, it may be Katrina, it may be earthquake, had been everywhere around the world. And now in the advocacy, particularly the challenge uh, faced by the Sikh community in the post 9-11 scenario, uh, United States organized sex in a way and now that advocacy part has reached the corridors of power here in Washington DC where in the last two days as it was the second day of this year's advocacy which is summit tomorrow will be the final day uh, the volunteers the responsible people in different organization across United States they uh, descended on Capitol Hill went met congressmen uh, with the State Department, with the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom. And uh, we are proud of this organization that uh, they are doing a wonderful job. And even today's uh, this dinner was wonderful. The American Sikh Congressional Caucus representatives were here. The representatives of Sikh community from all over the United States were here. And we hope uh, that in the coming time, uh, United States will be strengthened by the response which they got from the
country today and uh, congratulations to all the office bearers, to the volunteers and to all the activists who have worked day and night, those who have had many sleepless nights to make this uh, day a success and uh, thank you very much. Well, United Six is a collective organization of, of uh, the Sikh community as such and um, as you've seen the number of congressmen that have come and the number of NGOs that visited, it's a sign that shows that the, there is a strong need of the voice of the Sikhs in, the, in Washington DC and um, uh, we will make sure that we work very hard to make sure that the global issues are addressed and uh, they are uh, met uh, vociferously and uh, appropriate actions are taken to make sure that the issues related to the Sikhs in France and Belgium, issues impacting at the air, Sikhs at the airports in Italy and other countries are addressed, including Quebec. Thank <laughs> you.